It is football all the way between now and four as we look at the football side of the World Cup with Vinnie Perth, the former League of Ireland winning manager of Dundalk. How are you, Vinnie? Good. How are you, John? Good. Very well. And we also have on the line the co-ramblers manager, Shane Keegan. Shane, how's the form? John, Vinnie, how are you getting on? We're well. We're well. Um, all the football you love uh, across one space uh, is on Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sport Football and Off the Ball brought to you by Sky as well as listening on News Talk Now. You can watch us on our live streams, Periscope on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook and on the OTB Sports app. You're telling me off, Ervin, you're looking forward to the football. You just want to get it going now. Yeah, um, I'm not embarrassed to say I'm really, really looking forward to the football. I think... Um uh, it has been a slow build up to it for obvious reasons the timing of it we uh, we myself and Nathan covered Brighton last week and two of the Brighton players uh, Estepana the left back and Ciedo in midfield play for Ecuador tonight which is really strange that's sort of one week in the difference you right. know so the World Cup has just come upon us really quickly and uh, but it is it is a sensational tournament um, you go back over the years and remember watching videos of uh, the great Brazilian sides, all of this stuff. And my first love was pr- of where I really fell in love with football, I think, was, yeah, the great Liverpool team of the late 80s, 88, 89. But Italian 90 was amazing. And it wasn't a brilliant uh, spectacle in terms of when you look back and now the amount of goals scored, but the whole sort of... The, the team around that Italian 90 was amazing the Nessa Dorma added to it all the yeah, different yeah. things yeah. stadiums were brilliant and it's for a me, formative part of anybody's childhood really yeah it is and you always remember I, I sort of remember uh, I was really young remember watching bits of and I don't think I remember it but I remember as in you know your, your mind plays tricks because you see many so many things about 86 but really the 1990 was my first real proper memory of football and what an amazing tournament it was. Qatar, Ecuador, four o'clock start, Irish times to seven o'clock, three hours ahead is Qatar. So the matches is actually be favourable for the Irish audience, 10, 1, 4 and 7 primarily for the group stage, 3 and 7 for the knockout stage and then the final on Sunday, December 18th is at three o'clock. Shane, probably a tally 90 for you as well was your first uh, taste of the World Cup, was it? 100% John, yeah it was and uh, look, I, I suppose having a having a young lad in the house here now who's the same age, roughly the same age that I was heading into the 1990 World Cup, it really just made, does make you long and, and I suppose pine for the fact that we're not there ourselves, um, it'll be really, really enjoyable, I, I'm, I'm like Vinny, I just can't wait for the football to get started, looking forward to seeing what what trends develop and, and, and what new tactical plays come, we, we see in the World Cup, but Nearly more so for the young fella than for myself. It's just, you know, it's just such a pity that we're we're not there ourselves and that we're not involved ourselves because the memories just aren't aren't quite the same in that sense, you know. Yeah, we play Malta in a friendly in Valletta this evening at seven o'clock. As uh, so Karen Benzema is out, Vinny, for France, uh, a thigh injury, and uh, Conte's gone, Pogba's gone, and now Benzema. So not only the quality of the players, but the leadership. I know Benzema was out of the picture for France for so many years, but he came back in. He's the player of the year, won the Ballon d'Or, was good at the Euros. It is a blow. Yeah, no, it's a huge blow for them. Um, it's funny. It, it, it's funny. Uh, I was thinking about France over the last couple of days, and I really like that. You know, we're talking about a team like France being under the radar as such, but they've got so much quality in their squad. And interestingly, it's just saying to you off air, maybe um, you you being one who likes to throw a little tip around, but Giroud could come into that team yeah. now and you know he'd be fairly long odds for being top goal scorer it ultimately depends how deep France go but I think they're really strong ultimately I think they're still a really strong side um, I like what uh, the manager does Deschamps and when you look at their, their midfield it's really young two young Real Madrid players um, uh, Camavinga, Camavinga. Camavinga yeah and uh, I just think I about France where it's either all in or all out and if that togetherness comes comes to, if they come as a unit together I think they could go really deep into the tournament and which is an obvious thing to say but they've got players at the, playing at the highest level all through Europe and my, I have a fear about European sides in terms of the amount of games they've had to play over the last couple of months and will will they pick up lots of injuries and will that affect the outcome of this tournament but um, France for me Really, really, really strong, and as much as that's a huge blow for them, Benzema. But um, Giroud's in really good form, really, really good form, scoring a lot of goals in uh, Serie A. So um, for us, we see him as the, the guy who played for Arsenal, but I think you might be surprised how well he's playing outside of the Premiership. 
It's interesting, isn't it, Shane Keegan, the debate around South American teams versus the European teams and are the South American teams really tested when it gets to the World Cup if you consider the recent history? Brazil haven't won it since 2002. Argentina haven't won it since 1986. Uh, Europe have provided the last four winners and 13 of the last 16 semi-finalists. So that is a trend that needs to be broken. Will it be broken in this tournament, you think, with the South American teams, with Uruguay also in the picture? I think so, John, to be honest with you. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, you're kind of getting ready for this slot and you're looking down, you're going through various bits and pieces on, on, on the teams and having a look at Everton and Wise Scout. And to be honest with you, in my head, when I looked at the strength of all the kind of main contenders for it, I, I actually thought Brazil and Argentina do look the, the two strongest sides. And I think the, the odds kind of reflect that as well. So they do. The, the thing is, obviously, if they both win their group, which it's it, it'd be very surprising if they don't win their both, both, both win their group, they'll end up on the same side of the draw. Uh, which means they couldn't, they'd, they'd have to meet, meet each other before the final. But yeah, I'd, I'd be very, very surprised not to see one of the two two of them in the final. They've got extremely strong squads. Um, they've got, you know, very few injury problems, kind of settled starting 11s. And then the big thing is is going to be, you know, looking at some of the clips during the week of some of the teams training. There's no doubt, John, that the heat is going to be an incredibly massive, massive factor in this. It really is. I think it's going to be a massive factor. And there are two countries that you'd be looking at and saying, well, it shouldn't be any major a major problem to them, you know. Especially during the day, which would be, what, one o'clock Qatari time. The matches in the evening obviously be a bit more... Uh, comfortable and palatable for the players. Um, so Brazil, Shane, uh, Allison's an amazing goalkeeper. Uh, Casemiro and Fred will be the holding pivot players. And then it's a case of how do they build the team around Neymar. And in recent times, uh, Chichi, the coach, has used Richarlison as the front man. He scored seven goals in his last six games. He'll have Vinicius Jr. in there. Um, even Rafinha's come into the team recently. Lucas Paqueta generally tends to play in the side. Will he play Thiago Silva? He has, what, Marquinhos and Edermid Atau. It's an array of riches, like uh, Roberto Firmino didn't make it. Uh, Gabriel, the Arsenal defender, didn't make it. Whereas four years ago, when something went wrong, when Casemiro was suspended against Belgium, Fernandinho came in and, and flopped. So I think they've got a bit better squad now. Even like if Alisson, something happens to him, they got Ederson. Yeah, it's, it's it's an embarrassment of riches, really, as I say, certainly starting starting with the goalkeeping position. I mean, my God, you know, what, what would any other country have to have to have Ederson as their first choice keeper? You know, he's he's in the top five keepers in the world, in my opinion. Um, so they have no issue there. Yeah, like the the forward options are just uh, you know, it's absolutely incredible the forward options that they have. Like I would I would be surprised to see Richarlison start, given the amount of different players that they have. But look, like you say, it, 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 he has started a hell of a lot of games recently, and maybe he just fits that the way they want to go about things. Like Rafinha is, is kind of you know in the in the in the in with a serious chance of getting a start there. Lucas Paqueta is in with a serious chance of getting a start there. I think they've used him a hell of a lot. Now he's a a guy that we haven't seen a huge amount of since he came into West Ham. I think he's he kind of had initial injuries and that, but he does look a he does look a good player. He'd give them something a little bit different. There's even talk, John, that if they if they were really going for it, they could play Lucas Paqueta in the middle with Casemiro and, and, and Fred yeah. could miss out. And then that allowed them to play four out and out, really, really attacking players in those front four positions. Strangely enough for Brazil, or based on everything that me, you and Vinny would probably think of with Brazil, you know, if you're looking for a weakness, it's it's arguably maybe the two full backs. Yeah. Um, the, the full back options maybe aren't quite what they've had in the past. I suppose the obvious two to jump to me are Cafu and Roberto Carlos, but all the way along through all the World Cups, they've always had outstanding dynamic full backs. And I don't think the two they have at the moment, like it's, it's probably going to be Danilo, um, Sandro possibly on the other side, not quite of, of the standard that they've had in the past, but. Look, we're, we're kind of touching the straws coming up for weaknesses there. It does look an outstanding team. But, you know, with all with all the players there that they have and, you know, so many different options, still a huge amount of it is going to come down to what version of Neymar we see. If Neymar is fully on it and at his best and buying into the, the team ethic and allowing himself to sparkle within a team ethic rather than trying to feel that he has to be above the team, if he's really clued in, um, they're going to be very, very hard to stop. Argentina, four years ago, Messi was trying to carry them and it failed uh, Vinny against France in the last 16, but they were they were in crisis before then. They were beaten 3-0 by Croatia in in, in Russia. Um, but now, they, they haven't been beaten in three years. Uh, they, they have a happy camp. They have a good manager. They've got Christian Romero and Lisandro Martinez now uh, into the defence. 
Uh, it seems like they've got a good structure and Messi's back in form. So uh, you'd have to think with, if Lautaro Martinez can st- score some goals, they could go very far. Yeah, I think uh, Martinez is the key to them as much as we... we Which we, one? The defender or yeah, the attacker? <laughs> the attacker, obviously. But I think that's the key to them. If they can score enough goals... Um, um, obviously, Messi... Um, I think I think most people would love to see Messi win this World Cup. I think that would be... Um, and and we'll go on to Portugal, but wouldn't mind a, uh, a Portugal... Argentina World Cup final <laughs> wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, you know. And let's sort out who's the best once and for all. But I think Martinez will be the key to it if he scores enough goals. Um, I know their their record coming in is really strong and they're unbeaten, but they haven't played a lot of European nations uh, because of the friendlies and uh, we play uh, Nations League football here, so they aren't able to come over. So they probably haven't been tested to the same level of, of some of the European sides who, on paper, the form is up and down at different stages. So that's the only question mark on them. What will they be like when they're, when they're tested against some of the best teams? And um, um, and I think we have to also point out when it comes to, say, Argentina or Brazil, who are, are rightly favourites or they're, they're about this, the World Cup, once you go to that sort of the last 16s knockout football and anything can happen and um, it's just... it's. Uh, I'm not convinced Argentina are where we think they are and I think I have to be convinced on them uh, but they certainly have the players they've got some players at really high level um, but at the same time I just have to I have to question is Martinez for example the player we think he is will he spearhead that attacking line for them give them enough goals and for me they look a little bit short of, of someone like Brazil but we, we're going to find out aren't we Spain uh, and Germany are in the same group, Shane. And when I'm looking at the pair, pair of countries, I'm just going, who is going to get the goals for both of them? Because they got Spain have got obviously all the midfield talent and the young talent coming through. Germany got a Champions League winning manager now and Hansi Flick has freshened them up. But are there going to be breakout players within Spain and Germany uh, assault in the World Cup now, you think? Yeah, well, look, like you said, I think the breakout players, well, I don't know, can we really yeah. call the likes of Pedri breakout anymore? Um, it looks as though they're going to stick with with, with tried and tested up front. Um, look, Morata shipped an awful, awful lot of stick uh, at the last Euros. And, you know, he he's probably not quite of the standard that you'd want um, anymore at centre forward in a team that's going to go and try and go the whole way in it. Um, but they don't seem to have any other solutions. You know, they really, really don't. No other centre forward has emerged that that can take the jersey off them over the last while. Look, I I think they've got a they've got a strong side. They've got a very very strong side. Um, look, Pedri Pedri was my favourite player to watch at the Euros without a shadow of a doubt. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I really really do. But you would just wonder. Is there enough goals in them? Like they'll keep the ball all day long. That midfield three, you know what you're going to get. They'll, they'll absolutely. It's amazing how how much they resemble the previous midfield three that we all remember again in in terms of how they go about things. They look reasonably solid at the back. Again, the fact that the likes of Azpilicueta is possibly still in the starting eleven, I would have thought that's another player that's that's maybe past their best. But the question is, I, I they don't quite have that. X factor in the final third that you would see from from the South American sides and even some of the stronger European ones, the obvious one in France, even without Benzema, there's still a real, real X factor. Even England, you know, a real X factor in, in the final third. Um, look, I think they'll go well. I think they'll go well. Um, toss of a coin between themselves and Germany as to which the two of them top the group. I don't think there's a lot between either of those two sides. I'd be surprised to see either of them make the semi-finals, though. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um... We have Qatar against Ecuador kicking off at four o'clock here at the World Cup. Um, like I'm just going to even go through. Like Morata's never scored more than 15 goals in a league season. Uh, when I'm thinking of Germany, is Kai Havertz going to be the leader of the line? You know, Werner's injured. It's not really Kai Havertz's position, is it? Uh, eight goals in 29 Premier League games for Chelsea last season. Yeah, but what I think what you, Germany and Spain are sort of in a similar position. They've got a lot of young uh, players coming through. Uh, Musala at, yeah. uh, at Bayern. We. World Cups are brilliant at throwing out a new star, yeah, new breakout people, players, breakout yeah. players. And uh, this this young guy, 19, uh, at Bayern Munich, I think he could be brilliant. But again, we don't know what he's even going to start. They've got, I think Germany have a real array of talent. And how mad is it to come out with the Lion 
Germany are almost <laughs> underdogs, like yeah. or coming under the radar. They, you know, I think Rudiger at the back, if he's at it, I think he's outstanding and he's a real team player. He's someone you'd love to play alongside and he can galvanise that defence. And But they've got like Gundogan as well in midfield. They've got goals that pop up in different areas. Serge and, Gnabry, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, really, I really rate Germany in terms of if there's a, if that again I keep saying that that team that uh, they go on a journey and and sometimes you can you can just snowball into a tournament so both Germany and Spain are, are going to be a fascinating watch I don't think there'll be loads of goals in both of the teams but um, um, again they're both very similar in that way that the real strengths are probably in around that midfield and that front three areas but neither of them have a centre forward that y- you can ha- hang your hat on and say there's five six goals in the tournament with them and. Uh, but again, we're waiting for a breakout pair player probably to do that for them. We're looking ahead to the World Cup, uh, which kicks off at four o'clock with Qatar against Ecuador with Shane Keegan, the Cove Amateurs boss and the former League of Ireland winning manager with Dundalk, Vinnie Perth. Uh, football and off the ball brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. You can text in your predictions or questions at 53106. Just going through here, two 18-year-olds going to Qatar uh, Gavi for Spain, obviously he's broken into the Barcelona side, and Yusuf uh, Mukoko, who has scored six goals for Dortmund in the Bundesliga this season. Will they? Um, I'm just thinking of Javi Simons has never played, I don't think, for the Netherlands, and he's been brought by Louis Van Gaal. Yeah. Um, just on the Dutch, uh, Shane Keegan, like Van Dijk, I think it's like uh, Frankie de Jong. You know, you have a very solid defence. Um, the goalkeeper in position, I don't know if they've got a really talented goalkeeper in the in the you know, in the guise of a Hans and Breukelen or an Edwin van der Sar, or do they have the strike power? But Louis van Gaal knows how to manage, uh and they've got a quite an easy run. Do you think they can go further than people expect, Shane? Um, yeah, I, I, I think obviously they'll come out of the group. Um, and I think, like you said, they've got a, I, I think they've got second in, in England's group, isn't it? If they manage to win their own group, which you would think they should be good enough to, to finish ahead of whoever comes second in, in that group. Beyond that, I don't know. Like you say, like it's, it's really not a good thing to be heading into a World Cup not knowing who your starting goalkeeper is going to be. And, you know, I think to the best of my knowledge, they've, they've, it literally could be any of three. They really, really don't know where they're at in terms of that. Um, look, they've, they've, I think even though Van Dijk hasn't been his imperious best lately, I do think he's he's still pretty much near enough the best centre-half in the world. That will give them a, a serious chance. Van Gaal seems to have switched... Um, shape late in the day as well which is is another strange thing he's yeah he's kind gone 5-3-2 now yeah yeah he has he has and he's kind of always been a back four guy really so he has so that's that's strange but it's it's kind of needs must look we all remember Dumfries at the, at the Euros he was outstanding in the, in the way that he bombs up and down the line so he'll certainly give them that like it's mad John you look at a front two us, well, not all of us, maybe. <laughs> but me, maybe, when you see you see a hell of a lot more Premier League soccer probably than you do anything else. You maybe overly judge players on how they performed when they were in the Premier League. I mean, a front two of Memphis Depay and Stephen Bergwijn, based on what we saw in the Premier League, you're looking and going, well, that's not up to much. Two of them have been absolutely top-notch for the Netherlands for the last couple of years. Depay is, is a real, real superstar over there for them, absolutely flying at club level as, as well. I know he's kind of minutes maybe not not quite where he would have wanted them to be of late but they're they're the guy that like that's their likely front two so it is um it wouldn't exactly strike fear into most defenses I wouldn't have thought if I'm perfectly honest but yeah I, I think they'll they'll get they'll see the last eight they'll see the last eight at that stage I think they run into a, into an Argentina if it all goes according to plan and I, I wouldn't put them in again I wouldn't put them in that in that class that they to go beyond that. The to uh, speaking about Memphis Dubai, I suppose again going back to it, he is definitely a contender for Golden Boot as well. Like his his goal scoring record for Holland is generally really really good. He's come off the ball a little bit of late, but um, there's there they are a team and a nation again. There was a the Dutch had a lot of problems maybe eight nine years ago, and they've really resolved that. Um, they they've come together as a team as a family. Uh, they always had issues going into tournaments, but um. It, it's uh, we I, I, we had some study visit with the Dutch national team ju- ju- during the pro license and little things like they built a team hotel within the training ground where the players are mixing more together and it's it's about building the harmony and um they're starting to get the benefits uh, over the last couple of years and um I keep making the reference to a team a team and a, a you group think that's of, really important to win a World Cup uh, it has to if be. you watch that French documentary in 2018 it was very much uh, you could see the unit there yeah and um and 
when you go back to someone like um, um, from from France, you um, centre midfield, uh, oh, Pogba, Pogba, and you look at the strength of him in that dressing room, and it's we got a small little insight to it, a bit of a team talk at half time, and people don't see what that means. Uh, do you, these guys are locked up together now for four or five weeks in a really small country in a lot of heat and how they manage that and how these people stick together and ultimately it pays out on the pitch and the key is uh, they talk about a lot in rugby about the, the bomb squad or the, the bibs or the people in the reserves but when you're bringing uh, particularly the top nations you're bringing 24 really first class footballers together and only starting 11 of them then what's in behind you is a, a, the support group is huge in a, in a World Cup or European Championships. It's always been the way. Very seldom do you, do you see a team winning these tournaments and you hear of disharmony in the background. Generally, it's really good. So I think that's crucial. And the Dutch have really uh, realised that was a big problem for missing out major tournaments. And they fixed that with small little uh, bits and pieces around the training ground. Spent millions on it. But effectively, uh, the floor of the um, the team hotel, you walk out and you don't walk out into a corridor. It's one big open space where they share spaces, they share eating areas, all of that stuff. And building bridges across different sort of people are... Uh, are in their squad so for me that's a huge part and um, I'd like to see the Dutch I'd like to see the Dutch go well I really would yeah I think we all would, would. John to, to extend on, on, on Vinny's point like you look at the alpha males in a lot of dressing rooms and how much of an impact they're going to have on, on how well their sides do like there's absolutely no doubt the alpha male in that dressing room is Louis van Gaal himself yes. you know to, to still be there and, and still be as dominant a figure at, at 71 I think he's he's going through st- testicular cancer or something and everything at the moment isn't he and, and yet he will be he will be the dominant voice in there. There's no chance of any player kind of hijacking things with him around, that's for sure. No, he's not well, and it'd be uh, very poignant if uh, if they could do it. Uh, the Belgians, I'm less uh, keen on, I have to say, folks. Uh, when I'm looking at um, my one of my, my favourite players of all time, Toby Alderweireld as a Spurs fan, and Jan Vertonghen playing in the Belgian league at 33 and 35 years of age, respectively. Um, Hazard is not the player he was. Lukaku has had injuries and issues. I like Leandro Trossard. I don't know if he's going to feature much of the World Cup, but... Um, just seems to me that they're over the hill a bit, Shane. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, no, look, that's absolutely no doubt. You know, we've been speaking for, for a long time, the best part of 10 years, about a golden generation, and they never managed to managed to quite get over the line with them, really, did they? And now you're looking at an awful lot of those players, as you say, past their best, be it age, um, in terms of the defenders, or be it form in terms of, of Hazard. Um, and I'm with you, to be honest, anything I've seen, or more to the point, not seen, because we've seen so little of Hazard um, in the last the last year or two, Leandro Trossard has been top-notch. I, I would be, you know, I, I think it would be a, an awful decision if they went with Hazard over Leandro Trossard. I, I think he would be a much, much better option for them. You know, like, if 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 they go with him and you've got a, a front three, well, kind of two attacking midfielders of De Bruyne and Trossard playing in behind Lukaku, like Lukaku is still an absolute handful, proven proven midfield pairing in, in, in Witzel and Tillemans as well. They've, they've always had good wing backs. Again, they're they're very very eye catching. Munier and Castagna or Carasso or whoever they go with. It's just those question marks over the back line. Now they're lucky in that they've got, you know, again arguably one of the very very best keepers in the in the world to try and and, and bail them out. But um, yeah, look, it, it's there's just too many question marks defensively. I do think I, I think they're decent. Like as I say that. You're, you're quite simply not going to rule out any team well, that has Kevin De Bruyne in the yeah, side. Yeah. Simple as that. He's, you know, he's just a different level. He really, really is, and he's one of the the fellas who's capable of being an absolute star um, in this World Cup. But yeah, there's just too many question marks defensively. Again, they're going to face either either Spain or Germany, aren't they? If they they manage to come out top of their group, um, they'll face whoever finishes second in the other one, and. No matter which of those two it is, even though I've even though I've said I can't see Spain or Germany going going the whole way either, I I, I think either of those would probably be a, a, a too much of a test for for Belgium at the moment. But that's but the key for Belgium is they don't have an overly difficult group with uh, Canada, Morocco, Croatia, and you can find they can a team like Belgium can find a rhythm, you know, um, they can find a rhythm in their play, uh, they can get people up to speed. I think. 
yes they've underachieved for the quality of player they've had for the last 10 years but again if Belgium were to sail through their group win comfortably have a great bit of confidence and take on the Spain or Germany in the last 16 again it's why we love this competition particularly when the last 16 starts you've got top teams top players like Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne can win a game on his own against Germany or Spain when I say on his own I mean in terms of carrying a team so this is this is the fascinating part of, yeah. of what's ahead of us you have any person Shane Keegan on the World Cup 53106 with a question or prediction if you want to get in touch with the cost of 30 cent we're going to talk about England and Wales after this football on off the ball with Sky proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland women's national football team this is News Talk John Duggan sitting in for Joe Malloy on your Sunday until 7. We're continuing our World Cup preview with the former League of Ireland winning manager with Dundalk, Vinnie Perth and the co-ramblers, Boss Shane Keegan. Football on Off the Ball brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sports and Premier Sports. You can listen across the country on News Talk and also watch us on our live streams on the OTB Sports app, YouTube, Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, getting your questions into us uh, and your opinions on 53106 at the cost of 30 cents. You can also tweet us at Off the Ball. Um, I'm just looking at the screen here, lads, ahead of Qatar, Ecuador, uh, four o'clock start, the opening World Cup game, Gary Lineker there and Alan Shearer and Alex Scott and uh, Ashley Williams and England, Shane Keegan. I just very simply, England discuss. <laughs> yeah. Um, where do you start? Look, there's pros and cons with them, John, obviously. Um, the con being, it's, it's amazing that given all the turbulent uh, couple of months that he's had, that, that, that Harry Maguire still looks like a a nailed on starter for them really. Um there has to be question marks there. I mean, where is his where is his confidence levels at the moment? Where is his 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 head at at the moment? Um further up the field, they certainly have the players, John. There's no doubt. I think the question mark is is around Gareth Southgate's use of these players. He's you know, you've got a couple of managers, to be honest with you, who are are kind of very regimented and very kind of shaped tactics first, despite some of the players that they have at their disposal. Portugal probably fall into that into that category. France, even with the attacking talent they have, Deschamps will make sure it's it's kind of system first. But Southgate certainly fits that mould as well. Um, I think a lot of England supporters, England people commentating on England, would like to have seen him come up with some form of a shape that allowed him to play four of the attacking players. He's not going to do it this late in the day, that's for sure. We, we've all seen England. We know their system inside out. It, it's pretty much bang on going to be three, four, two, one, um, which means you've only really got three of those attacking players on, on the pitch at any one time. For me, it's, it's amazing that the likes of a, a, a Phil Foden is very possibly not going to be in England starting eleven. I mean, he seems to be veering towards Sterling and Saka, as the two that, that would be absolutely behind. crazy. It would, wouldn't it? But but yeah, and maybe I'll be wrong. Um, to me, Saka, you can understand. I think he was England's player of the year. Wasn't Sterling he? hasn't um, had a great season. No, but but he 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 still seems to be picked fairly quickly at the vast majority of the time for England. I'm with you. Listen, I'm with you. I'd I'd be going. I'd be going. Phil Foden. Listen, he'd after Harry Kane. To be honest with you, after Harry Kane, he'd be the the first name on my team sheet. I think he's an outstanding young talent and. If we're talking of breakout stars like Phil Foden, if he if he is given a starting position, um, he's absolutely as capable as anybody has been the absolute breakout star of this World Cup. He's outrageously talented. Um, I just you think, just Shane, wonder, though, sorry, I just think yeah. when you look at the injuries and where they are in, in terms of, say, Trippi or Kyle Walker, I think England will play a back four. And I think you that think, might yeah. give him a bit more freedom um, to be a bit more exp- uh, expressive, I think you might see him in midfield of Rice and Bellingham. Then of Rice and Jude Bellingham. Um, I hope he does that. Did, if Luis Enrique was in charge of this England squad, I would fancy him to go close to win the World Cup. He'd get all his attacking players on. He'd dominate the ball, and he'd, uh, they'd be outstanding. This manager has bored his way close to winning the European Championships in the World Cup um, he's got to be braver he, he'll sit back in 10 or 20 years time go should have won the World Cup with this group or European Championships the players they have is absolutely outstanding I'm I'm partially an England fan because I mean, I'm not afraid to admit it because if someone says black I normally say white but that's my personality black. But, yeah, but generally, uh, the one of the main reasons I am is because, go back to 1990, Gascoigne was absolutely amazing. I think Phil Foden has the potential to be as good as that and better. He, 100%. he could light up this World Cup if given the freedom by this coach. So, 
um, the the problem we have is he'll want either Kyle Walker or Trippier into his team and he may switch later on into a back three but at the start because of injuries uh, he may be forced to be a bit more uh, progressive play a few more forward players and because of the group not being overly difficult he could go on a really good run build momentum and he might be forced actually by accident into being a bit more of an attack minded coach and I hope he gives the freedom to likes of Phil Foden um, Saka um, and, and if Sterling starts who hasn't who has struggled for form but he's, he tends to be loyal to people like that someone like James Madison, if he could get into that midfield ahead of Jude Bellingham and ahead of uh, Declan Rice, just in in that little pocket, they could be sensational to watch. But the coach has to I, give him the freedom I, to do it. I I was I was coming to a similar conclusion. My only thought around it, Vinny, was I thought a poor first result, which I think is very very possible. By the way, I thought a poor first result could force his hand in terms of changing the system. I thought he would go with Maguire, Stones and Walker as his three centre-halves and Trippier and Shaw as his wing-backs. And I just thought, unless they get a set-piece, now they are good on set-pieces and it's astounding the amount of bloody penalties they managed to earn. I mean, it's incredible. Like, not taking anything away from Harry Kane. He still has to put him away, but the amount of Harry Kane's goals that come from the penalty spot seem to be incredible. But I just thought I could see them lining up with the back five or back three or whatever you want to call it against Iran. I could see that one, John, being a nil-nil. If they're, if they're not more expressive and not more expansive, that could be a nil-nil. And then that could potentially force his hand that all of a sudden one of the defenders is sacrificed for, for one of those attacking players that we're talking about, a Foden or a, a Madison, even a Grealish. You know? yeah. There's just so many talented players in that but, area of the field for them. But, but guys, only live once. Like Trent Alexander is one of the best attacking players in world football. Just get him into your team. Particularly... Uh, okay, Kyle Walker, Kieran Trippier, if they're fit, I can understand why he might go with them, but they're not there, they're not fit enough at the moment. Um, is he going to be so conservative and have like a Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire, um, John Stones, and even go for someone like Ben White at right back? You don't you, you don't win World Cups with that back four. They're not going to win it in your view. Yeah, sure no. Uh, you've you've got to give uh, your it just shows how freedom. important the manager is um, just to let you know by the way folks in Gaelic Games Mike Cullen into that Connacht Club final in football they beat Strokestown after extra time 2-8 to 7 points in, at Chim Stadium at the moment it's near Persic 2-10 Ballygunner 1-8 at the Gaelic Grounds in the Munster Hurling semi-final at the club level with Ballyay of Clare into the final beat St Finbars of Cork by a point uh, the Galway final ended in a draw Lockray and St Thomas's and Slock Neal won the Ulster Club semi-final against Porta Ferry um, Wales Vinny um, nice for them it's nice to be there I don't know if they're going to make any waves I doubt it personally but maybe you are maybe you have a different feel um, yeah look I, again when you go back to Wales you look what, what they've done they've done quite well at major tournaments recently because because again they've built a team and they've built a team of togetherness and then for the big moments they always had Gareth Bale I just I just think there's a lesson for even the Republic of Ireland here. P- people throw out the lazy comment, well, we don't have the players, we don't, they're not playing at the right level. Wales are going to a, a World Cup. Their midfield squad, the players were at Swansea City, Cardiff, Dundee United, Portsmouth, Nice, Milton Keynes, um, Huddersfield, Swindon and Fulham. That's their midfield and there's where the cl- they're coming from. So... Um, but at the same time, so from an Irish perspective, we've got to say uh, that that excuse is no longer good enough. We have the players and, and Wales have proved that. But uh, what that squad also list shows you is there is limitations to this squad. They are, um, they will, they might struggle. I like, I like to look at the USA to get out of that group. I think they might struggle and not get out of the group. But again, you've got someone like Gareth Bale and He's managed himself over the last number of months to get himself ready for this. Kiefer Moore leads the line really, really well for them. And um, they, they will be, but at the same time, they'd be really hard pushed to get out of that group. OK, so the shoulder teams, as I would call them, uh, Shane Keegan, you might have one that I, I don't mention here. Serbia, Croatia, Portugal, Uruguay, Denmark. Who can impress and who can go far among those teams? Yeah, I, th- I think they're within the group that you mentioned there. All right, John, to be fair, the two I, I, I would be going with would be the two European sides, uh, Croatia and Denmark. Um, they both had had very good recent form. The two of them finished ahead of, ahead of France in their nation leagues, Nations League group. Um, if, and, and the key thing for me is 
they've both got an absolutely outstanding centre midfield player in 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 Modric and Eriksson. Um, you know, the two of them are absolutely ageless. They're 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 phenomenal. They're able to control the tempo of a, of a game. I mean, I think Croatia are. are Arguably better looking than they were last time around. Who's going to score their goals, yeah. though? That's the worry. You know, Manzukic retired now. That's it. That's it. Exactly. I've taken the, the words out of him out. In both cases, in both cases, that's the that's probably the problem. All right, so it is. Um, but I, I I do think they have enough about them that they could be looking at latter stages. Uruguay obviously is an exciting one as well. Um, midfield pairing of of Bentacker and, and Valverde looks, you know, really, really exciting on paper. So it does. Um and obviously they've got got Darwin Nunes as well. So it's it's yeah, there are a couple I, I would be so look, do I think we're going to see a, a bolter like we've we've seen in some of the tournaments in the past? I, I I don't. I just think I think the South American sides and and the one or two of the stronger of the, the European sides are 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 too strong this time round, to be honest. What about you in terms of the shoulder teams, Vinnie Perth? Yeah, I like to look at Ecuador, believe it or not. Um, interesting to see how they get on. Getting out of group will be difficult because Senegal, I think, again... Are, 27 are, goals in uh, South American qualifying, joint second highest scorers. Yeah, they've Ener got... Ener Valencia, obviously, for Fenerbahce. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's really... The captain, yeah. yeah, he's the captain, he's the leader. He scores a lot of goals in the Turkish League, as you said. But also, um, I really like the left-back at Brighton, Estepona. Um, again, think about it, it's crazy. He only played seven days ago in the Premiership. but And uh, Cicedo in midfield from Brighton as well. The two of them are really good players. I think Cicedo, I think he cost Brighton five million. We I mean, think of the money clubs waste on these number sixes and um I think I think they could be like someone if again it's gonna be difficult out of group. They're someone who could just be a, a bolter and they've got some really yeah. strong players and again I don't think the weather will be as much as a problem to them. And again, going back to the European nations, a lot of players have been flogged to, flogged to get to this stage. And also, uh, Shane Keegan, the heat won't be an issue for Ghana, for Senegal, uh, for Cameroon. Chris Hutton, obviously, in the Ghana setup. Any of those teams? With Mane out, it's going to be harder for Senegal, obviously. Yeah, look, I, th- I think, to be honest with you, I, I'm not going to look at well. to know too much about them, John. I think they're just going to be very exciting sides to watch. Um, it is great when you get to see kind of a, a different way of going about it. Now, look, again, if I'm honest, I think because of the way world football is gone, nearly more so the way we just have a greater communication and everybody sees everything and everybody knows everything. I do think the general playing styles now are, are all becoming a bit more similar and a bit more likey likey kinda in terms of we haven't got that much of a difference now between a South American style of play and African style of play. But still just in, in terms of new faces, I mean we talk about people who are going to break through. That's you know, it's from teams like that that I think players are likely to come out of nowhere. Um, you look back at, at we've had some who've been phenomenal during the course of a tournament I mean James Rodriguez you know we all remember he was just sensational and then you know probably nothing next to nothing ever to follow up on that um, and I think that's probably where somebody like that the one team you skipped John that I was interested to know whether you've got him in your kind of as you say on the shoulder teams or whether you'd have him in the main group I, I think Portugal are going to be interested Ronaldo, well, Ronaldo for me is a negative, point. Shane. Ronaldo's a complete negative. Look at this circus the last couple of weeks. Absolute circus. And I don't know. Listen, I, I think it, that he's it, not the I disagree with you, John. Ronaldo could, that could, yeah. gar- he, he's something to prove. And when someone like Ronaldo has something he not, to prove. Is it, but is it, has, has, he, has he not got the talent anymore to do that? I know he scored those goals last season. He will still score goals for that team. That, that Portugal team, Shane's right, we haven't really mentioned it. It is full of talent. Um, they could go a long way. Ronaldo could um, upset the odds and upset a lot of people and have a really strong World Cup. Don't be surprised by that. If you underestimate that, that man and his ability to prove people wrong and do do it when he when people doubt him, you're underestimating. That's why he's made himself one of the best ever in the world. It's not by raw talent. It's by his desire to prove, prove himself, prove people wrong. Ronaldo could have an amazing World Cup. Be, John, they've, yeah. they've got a they've got a reliable goalkeeper. They've got outstanding fullbacks in in Mendes and and Cancelo, Diaz in the middle, the midfield pairing. Whether he, I don't know whether he could go. I, I was actually in just after Vinny on Sunday. I was doing the the, the commentary on on the Fulham game, and Polina was 
the man of the match. Yeah, but he's been a great time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was he was outstanding in that game. So he was. Polina. Then again, what like, a what a player though, Shane. Uh, and look at the money uh, they paid from. You think of the money Manchester United has spent on Casemiro, and of course Casemiro is up here. But look at the money that's going to cost them over the next four or five years and this guy cost I just remember 18 the, million I, I know that they were just so disjointed at the, at the European Championship like you know Germany hammered them and like yeah, I, I don't know and, and Portugal they're beat by Uruguay in the last World Cup I don't know I don't know if they're getting the best a bit like Southgate I don't know if Fernando Santos gets the best out of, the, out of, yeah, out of yeah, that group I, you know? I, look they will they will that's what I was saying I would put them in that team that will follow structure I just I'm, I'm with Vinny a team with a cause a team with a cause is a dangerous dangerous thing John and and in, in, Fernanda, in Bruno Fernandes and Bernardo Silva and Ronaldo and then I think I, if, if I was really pushing a breakout star I, I think it could be Rafael Leao I think he's absolutely electric electric and look, Diego Jota will be a, a loss for them but if it means Leao gets a starting jersey from, from the off I think it could actually work in their favour I, I think I, I, I think they'll go as far as the semi-final I really really do I think, I think, right. they'll, I think they'll, they'll come up against France in the semi-final I'm chuckling away here because Gianni Infantino is doing a speech uh, before the opening game of the World Cup, which is six <laughs> minutes away between uh, Qatar and uh, Ecuador in Qatar. Uh, just before we get our predictions for the World Cup, Vinny, Ireland Malta, seven o'clock tonight. You're at the Norway game. Can we be better than we are at the moment? Um, well, we have to be. It's not good enough. Um, we weren't good enough the other night. Um, um, why, I, why was that? Why? Because... Um, Too much possession going nowhere yeah we, we're making too many sideways passes I have a big pro- I, I, I think we this is an opportunity tonight we won't do it but we've got to change our shape when we when we play teams that are similar to us teams that are ranked in around us and we aren't um, we aren't uh, we haven't got enough intensity this shape this back three uh, it's a big call to leave out one of one of the, the three centre halves because they're probably arguably our better players but we've got to get away from this three five Three, whatever it is, it, it ended up with a back five the other day. We, uh, um, the manager has spoken about he doesn't have time between games to change shapes and different things, so they're not going to do it. But the long, we, if if we keep doing this against mid teams that are ranked the same as or lower than us, the results haven't been good enough. And the first sign of madness, doing the same thing and expecting different results. We've got to change our shape. We've got to come up with a solution. Uh, we've got to get fullbacks on. Uh, with, with wide men we've got the players to do because what we're doing now with this shape against teams ranked the same as us is not good enough and uh, uh, the results are there to prove that we have really struggled against some poor nations Shane Keegan yeah no look it's, it's hard to disagree with anything that's said there like you know Vinny, Vinny knows better than anybody really John the really frustrating thing here is you know I talk to to Dundalk players and, and the one thing that everybody keeps saying about uh, you know Stephen and Vinny's time together there was the freedom that players were given that players went out and they had this freedom to go and express themselves and to try things and you know that everybody was courageous in terms of their use of the ball and for whatever reason, we're, we're absolutely not seeing any of that at the moment. And for me, Stephen just has to go and challenge every player to see. I know it's a, in theory it's a meaningless friendly, but he's got to challenge every player to step who steps out there tonight to try and do something. Do something. Take a chance. Make something bloody happen. Stick your hand up and say, I'm the one who can, can make things come alive for us in the final third because it's... It's just so passive at the moment. It's extremely frustrating. Yeah, look, Shane and uh, John, not to go overboard, and but I seen it the other day Matt, Matt, when Matt, Matt already ends up in, and I know he plays wing back for Spurs at different stages, but he's got real Harry Kane. He's got a son. He's got Richarlison. Real pace and power up front. We we don't have that. We've got people finding their way. But we haven't had an overlap in nearly two and a half years from anybody. We haven't had an, an underlap from a fullback. Uh, we've lost what where we've gone to the possession based style and it's great and we're, we're a little bit better on the eye absolutely and I think the three of the back works against the, the top nations we haven't struggled against them it's these teams that are in and around us as I keep saying like we've got full backs and we've got wingers in that squad that can get 2v1s that can tr- add a little bit of intensity into our play it is so passive it is not the Stephen Kenny way and I just hope Again, going back to say Southgate, I hope that Stephen doesn't look back on this in two, four, eight, ten years' time and go, wow, I missed an opportunity. Because he's an attack-minded coach. And what I've seen on the pitch the night was not attack-minded play. Uh, World Cup predictions. So, Shane Keegan, who's going to win it? Um, I am going with Brazil to beat France in a final. And the player of the tournament will be Neymar, is it? Yeah, player of the tournament will be Neymar, will, yeah. And the Golden Boot winner? 
Oh, I'll go Neymar again, to be honest. And Vinny, who's going to win it? I've no idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I've actually no idea. Okay. About anything? About the player of the tournament? About the golden uh, boot? No. no. I, 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 like... I would like to see England at least get to a final. I'd like to see them be attack minded. I hope Phil Foden is the player of the tournament. I really yeah, do. Yeah. I hope he is. I think that's the star in him. Um, goal and boot. I'm going to go Livery Giroud as an outsider one just to be a bit different. And to be honest, oh, I, I can't pick a winner of the tournament. I okay. really can't. All right, Vinny. Well, hopefully in a couple of weeks' time when you come in again, you might have a. You, you'll see in a few matches, you might have a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yeah, being yeah. a pain in the no, neck. No, no, but how do I pick one? Well, you know, you got to be honest, and yeah. uh, like it is very open. It's very it's open. It's such an open tournament. Yeah, but that's John, the great isn't thing, it? you know. I, yeah. I think I think we're looking forward to the football side of it anyway. Shane Keegan, thanks so much. Cheers, John. Thanks, Vinny. Cheers, Cheers, John.